Pink and Keith Urban with One Too Many on BBC Radio Gloucestershire with John. It's coming up to 25 minutes past six now. Music on the way from the Happy Mondays. And uh, yeah, the new one from Demi Lovato coming up for you as well. But now it is time to catch up with my co-host at home tonight and it's Jeff. Hello, I'm Jeff, and I'm your co-host from Cheltenham this evening. A uh, fun fact that you might not know about me is that I've always been able to control my hiccups, so I only ever get one and then I can stop them. But will Jeff be able to share the knowledge with us tonight? <laughs> Useful tips on the evening show. Hiya, Jeff. Hey, John, how you doing? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm really good. Good, really good. good. How's your Wednesday been? What have you been getting up to? Uh, it's it's just another Wednesday, really, isn't it? No, it's... Um, <laughs> You know, it's, it's they all sort of blend into it. You have to look at the clock, don't you, to see what day it is. Oh Just yeah, because they're all they're all pretty much the same these days. But no, pretty good. That's good. Look at the clock. Look at the calendar. You know, the year. I think it's all yeah. <laughs> it's all, <laughs> all the same. It blending into one. Look, thanks so much for joining us on the show. Let's go straight in with your introduction. Then you are incredible at controlling your hiccups. I'm. I'm. It's a talent that I'm very proud of and very grateful for, but one that I haven't been able to pass on to to anyone that I care about. Unfortunately, oh, they no. still suffer. Oh, I thought we were all going to learn something tonight with you, Jeff. That, that would be a moneymaker, I reckon. <laughs> if I could bottle it and teach it, then I think that everyone would, would like to be able to learn that skill, but I haven't been able to so far. Okay, so talk me through your technique then. There must be something when you get some hiccups that you think, this is what I've got to do to get rid of them. Well, the only way that I can explain it is that I genuinely just think about stopping them. I, I, I breathe in as much as I can, and then I swallow, and then hold my breath, and then they're gone. Well, that, there we go. I mean, when, simple, didn't it? It's just that simple. When did you discover that you had this incredible talent? I've always known. It's just something I've always been able to do. I can't remember not being able to do it, to be honest. Oh. So uh, this is the thing. I bet people do ask you to, to try and share it. So have there been moments where you've, you've tried to pass this on and uh, it hasn't gone so well? No, it's just the family. And they don't really ask me to anymore. I, I, I just laugh at them and tell them they should, they should just stop. And... <laughs> <laughs> they get a bit angry, so I stop now. Well, there you go. I mean, I, I, it's quite a niche skill, isn't it, Jeff? You know, how, how often do you, would you say you use this this talent of yours? Oh, at least weekly. Do you think? Wow. You, you're quite afflicted when it comes to hiccups then, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Once a week. Wow, that's amazing. Okay, so look, let's talk a little bit about um, you and uh, the podcast, or should I say the pubcast, which we might hear a little bit of earlier on, but uh, later yeah. on. But just tell me tell me a bit about this then, for those who maybe didn't hear me talk about it a little bit earlier on in the show. Yeah, so um, I'm, a, I'm an agile coach, and so that means I go from, from company to company trying to help them uh, basically change the way that they work. Um, and I've got a few allies that I that I work with now and again one in particular a guy called Paul Goddard who I've worked with for close on 20 years now we uh, we often get together after work um, often in London or different places and just sort of debrief the day really even if we've been at different places or the same place and as sad as we are no matter what we talk about the conversation always seems to somehow come back to work (laughs) Uh, and we just thought after a while why not just stick a a recording device on the table in front of us and just record our conversations um just if not for no other reason than for our benefit just to just to play them back at some point yeah and uh, paul had the idea of you know putting it out, out online and, and um uh, apparently people seem to uh, seem to enjoy our not drunken ramblings but certainly ramblings over a pint <laughs> now this is i think it's a great idea and also what a fantastic opportunity to just go to various different places i was looking at some of your episodes a little bit earlier on yeah. do you know how many you've got now jeff well we've got up to about 115 that are actually live yeah uh, we've got a few more sort of special that aren't out on the actual pubcast stream as it were we've done for sort of private audiences if you like so we're getting on for about 125 i reckon Okay, so, uh, you know, we'll come on to talk about the last 12 months and how that's maybe changed what you've had to do. But actually, 115 episodes, are they always in a different location? We have... We have gone back to a couple. So the first episode we did was at the Tavern in Cheltenham, which, which a lot of your listeners will know. Mm. And shortly after that, there was a fire which closed it. Now, that wasn't anything to do with us, but not long after that, we went to another place that had a fire after we'd been there. So oh. we started to wonder. But when it reopened, we thought, we, well, we should really go back. So we've done two there. Um, and we have a sort of local haunt in Bristol where Paul and I and a couple of other friends used to work. 
uh, just around the corner, which we've been to a few times because it's nice in the middle of us. Paul lives in Wiltshire and I live in Cheltenham, obviously. So yeah. Bristol's quite a nice place in between. So we have been to a couple of places more than once, but generally speaking, we try and find somewhere different every time. So, you know, when we're talking about different places every time, apart from the old few, Jeff, that's an awful lot of drinking establishments, isn't it, you visited now for, for this? Awful. So, you know... We're awful talking... work, John. Awful work. Awful work. Well, yeah, obviously, awful, awful work. But actually... Professional. <laughs> What, what a fantastic opportunity to go out and find new places and um, and kind of just absorb them and, and record stuff while you're there as well. Yeah, and a lot of these places, they've got a history. You know, we've been to Britain's most haunted pub and, and all sorts of different things. So, um, yeah, you pick up a little bit of history and then somehow that weaves into what we do for a living. Yeah, that's, that's great. And then generally then, when you started putting these out there, what was the reaction like to begin with? Well... We were genuinely surprised. We thought, what's the worst that could happen? Because basically, you have we, we're not inflicting this on anybody. You know, they have to actually go out and search for it. So, you know, if you come across agile and beer, and that's in your search terms, then generally you're going to like this kind of stuff. So, the, the comments we got were actually so one surprise we had was tell us more about what you're drinking. So we had people who were interested in what we were talking about, but also wanted wanted the tasting notes. Now, neither Paul nor, nor myself are have, have what you call a sort of distinguished palate. So we've had to we've had to learn to develop our our descriptions of what we're drinking a little bit more over the over the years. Yeah. But yeah, generally speaking, it was it was just interesting conversation, and it was a lot less because we don't script any of it. Obviously, we just turn mm. up and genuinely talk about whatever is on our mind and see where it goes and so that kind of real thing with with the pub noise in the background people felt like they were there they were eavesdropping on a conversation between two professionals who were friends Mm. and you know that's the thing isn't it when you're there and having those conversations it must have been lovely to then you know something which you said we started out kind of for ourselves and then to get this sort of reaction uh, when you started to see some of that coming in and asking you for your tasting notes and various other things what was that like when you got that sort of positive reinforcement as to what you were doing yeah it was cool i mean we probably wouldn't have stopped anyway because we like going to the pub and chatting but <laughs> what we en- then d- ended up doing was we, we started doing live episodes where so we were streaming on youtube and we had people sort of calling in and asking us questions and joining in the conversation we had people posting us questions in advance and, and things like that we did live episodes in pubs with audiences where people would turn up and, and sit around and watch us talk which was a little bit strange but pretty cool <laughs> um so yeah it, it, it really grew mm. so um we'll, we'll come on to talk a little bit more later on about being an agile coach because I'm, yeah. I'm really interested in this uh, let's briefly touch on the last sort of 12 months or so before we break for a bit of music jeff because i imagine this has uh, seriously uh, affected getting out to pubs to put the podcast together and to get you recording so um when the first lockdown hit last year what did you do when it came to the podcast so obviously we couldn't we couldn't go out which was a little bit of a dent but what we did was we set up a what we called the social distance in um where we invited people who regular listeners just they could just join us on a on a friday or a, or a wednesday you know after work for a just a just a chat and a few drinks probably not as much work conversation more a bit of just staying in contact really and and you know just keeping each other going through what was pretty difficult time for lots mm. of people so it was good for us to stay in touch with people it was i think it was good for everybody else to stay in touch um so yeah it was different from your shed or you know <laughs> from the garden or whatever but um no it was a uh, change is as good as rest so yeah. Yeah, it was it was quite cool i love the idea was it the social distance in did you say yeah what a, what, a, what a great name inviting people in and so you literally did it from sheds and various you know wherever you could get to to you know get make it sound a little bit different jeff well not well, so my shed is my office basically I, oh. I, when um yeah we had we had a baby two years ago and my office next well i don't work from home i couldn't really have that next to the, the baby's office so I just, the baby's room sorry so I, I i basically converted one of my uh, a shed in my garden into where i where i that was my office so that yeah. was you know my bar if you like uh, and paul had his downstairs office in his home in, in wiltshire um, and people were just calling in from from all over the world to to join in and have a drink with us brilliant i love the idea of this bringing people together which is what we've needed we'll, we'll come on to talk about you know it could be exciting news you could be sitting outside a pub again from from next mm. monday potentially so we're just going to break for a bit of music and we'll come back and we'll keep chatting jeff in a few minutes time all right cool it's Happy Mondays with Step On on BBC Radio Gloucestershire with John. Hello. Uh, music coming up from Debbie Lovato. Some Tyro Cruz on the way for you as well. Now, though, 
It is time to return to my co-host at home. Tonight is Jeff, who's in Cheltenham. Hi again, Jeff. Hey there. Hey. So look, um, before that song, we were finding out a lot about the Agile Pubcast then, uh, which mm. is you and your friend. And you said, you know what, we're just gonna we're gonna go out. We have chats, and we ended up recording them. And people really liked uh, what we did. Now it's called the Agile Pubcast because you said you're an Agile coach. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what what exactly does that mean? So it's nothing to do with flexibility for a start. Uh, okay. The other the other confusion that you get is that I'm also uh, so scrum is a form of agile and I often often get confused with rugby coach but it's nothing to do with rugby either. Right. So it's it's to do with how organization how, how organizations get their work done basically. Um, so traditionally your organization's very much hierarchically focused so your your leaders at the top tell people what needs to be done those people go away and do it. Uh, your customers tell you what they need you build something that they hopefully want uh, and everything works out lovely Um, but over the last 20 years or so that's been less of a reality because things become a lot more complex a lot more digital a lot more fast changing um, and so we need to do a lot more of what we call inspecting and adapting uh, and actually empowering the people who are at the front line to figure things out rather than try and analyze them in advance. So I, I help organizations change their leadership model so that the people who are actually doing the work make a lot more of the decisions mm. uh, and, and manage themselves rather than expect to be managed by a manager, if that makes sense. So how does it work then? Are you brought in to kind of look at stuff and go, right, this this is you know, a, a suggestion I would like to make? And I imagine sometimes maybe those suggestions might not go down that, that well if you've got the leaders at the top who think, actually, I, I quite like being the leader at the top here. Well, so it's it, it, you're right there. It is it is a bit um, on the face of it. It's quite threatening for people of, of traditional pos- positions of leadership because you know they got to where they are by being the expert and making decisions. Mm. Uh, and now we're talking about opening up decision making responsibilities and empowering teams. And that a lot of these leaders are asking themselves, okay, so so what about me? Where do I add value? But those people are absolutely ideally placed and, and have the skills to shape culture to to change organizational processes so these these self-organizing teams aren't fighting against the system because Mm. the processes that we've got in place in our organizations are all geared up to actually help us work the way that we always have done rather than the way that we need to now so these leaders need to change those processes they need to enable they need to support they need to encourage they need to coach so what we mean by that is helping those teams and the individuals within the teams be a lot more confident in solving their own problems because mm. we've got a lot of muscle memory right if i've got someone who's historically told me what to do when i'm faced with a problem the natural response for me is to go and ask them what i should do but mm. we haven't got time in our organizations to basically push things up the chain of command and back down again the people at the at the front at the, at the customer face need to be able to make decisions there and then uh, and they need the confidence to be able to do that uh, how did this all come about jeff like what what did you do before or how did you get into this because it sounds quite niche but actually quite um quite clever really when you say it like that well i mean it used to be quite niche so uh, i was a project manager at uh, should we say a, a national telecoms company right um and uh, what we call our cycle time so the amount of time it takes for us to actually deliver something that our customers ask ask for was on average about two years and what typically happened at the end of two years was we would deliver something that was asked for in the contract, but by the time we delivered it, two years had passed, and actually our customers didn't actually want that anymore, mm. or they hadn't really very well understood what they did need in the first place um, because they didn't know what was possible. But they'd spent two years' worth of money and time um, with us, and they didn't end up with anything that was really what they wanted. So it was kind of out of necessity, really, that in order for us to be able to compete as a big institution against a lot of these small, nimble startups, we needed to be able to to shorten our cycle. So ask our customer what they want, find out they don't know what they want, give them what they don't want quickly and cheaply, (laughs) and then work out how we can then change that to what they do actually want. Mm. Okay, this is, yeah, really interesting. I've never heard of anything like this before, Jeff. I've never met someone who does what you do, so I think it's fascinating. Uh, you're going to be with us throughout the show tonight, so we'll, we'll chat again a little bit later on. We'll talk more about the podcast. Uh, we'll talk a bit more about the job as well, and maybe how the last 12 months has, has maybe affected what you do when it comes to work as well. So uh, we'll just have a bit more music, and we'll be back with you again a bit later on in the show, Jeff. All right? Nice one. Tonight, it's Jeff, who's co-hosting the show from home in Cheltenham. Hiya, Jeff. Hey, John. How you doing? Yeah, fine, thanks. Are you okay? 
Yeah, brilliant. Good, good. So where are you co-hosting from tonight? You mentioned your office being in a, in a shed earlier on. Are you there or are you somewhere else tonight? Yeah, yeah. I'm just in a shed in my garden. <laughs> Have you still uh, got the, the dregs of the sunshine tonight or is it a little bit? not. No, mm. I mean, it's not dark yet, but no, it's a pretty pretty cloudy sky. Oh, go on then. Give us, give us a little virtual tour of the shed. Um, well, it, it's quite nice, to be honest. When people join me on a Zoom call, they describe it as a log cabin, which oh. is a bit grand. But <laughs> but I have I have got a heater in here, a wood burner, which which is nice. Oh yeah. Um, so yeah, it's it's a sort of pine building with a couple of windows facing onto my neighbour's shed. <laughs> oh, lovely. <laughs> Imagining like, do you remember that TV show Christmas Lights? Who's got the better shed? You're the neighbour. It's like a little competition at the end of the garden. Do you think you've got the better shed? I think yeah. Yeah. You've got a log burner, Jeff. Have you used the log yeah. burner recently? Because it's been quite That's cold. The trunk car. I have, yeah. I have to come. Out, I have to come out here early in the morning, stick a few logs on, and then uh, get back in for a cup of tea while it warms up. Because yeah, it's icy, isn't it? Minus it is. two or something. It's crazy. Yeah, I know. Especially after all that, that warm weather we had. Now, look, you mentioned the shed earlier on because we were talking about the Agile Pubcast, uh, yep. which has been going. So, what, how long is it since you started this now, Jeff? Oh, you see now, Paul's the one with all the dates and the stats, but I'm going to say about four years. <laughs> okay, so we're looking at about four years, and you mentioned you've got more than 100 episodes, yeah. um, and, you know, things have had to change. You mentioned recording still, but obviously not in the pub over the no. last 12 months. But, you know, Monday, this could be quite exciting. Have you got any plans to get out to an outdoor venue at any point soon? Well, we were going to... I, I was going to go and travel to see Paul, because I still haven't given him his birthday present. Oh. Um and we were, so we were going to do something from his garden, basically, before the pubs opened. Mm. But he's uh, he's he's taking the time off, so you know he's on holiday. So the next the next pubcast, I think, is going to be a couple of weeks time. Right. Uh, uh, yeah, where we're going to we're going to go to Bristol. Paul's Paul's on the on the hunt for a, a beer garden in Bristol that we can use. Oh, that's nice. And you mentioned, you know, some of the places you've been. Obviously, you live in Cheltenham. You mentioned the Tavern was one of the first mm -hmm. in Cheltenham. So uh, various other places across Gloucestershire as well, which you've enjoyed recording in? Well, we've been at... See, I, I always refer to them as the old places. I used to think the Butler Source is what it's called now, isn't it? Oh, yeah. It didn't used to be uh, mm -hmm. when I used to go there. Um, <laughs> I was just thinking, when you were talking about the sun, just got me remembering. You know, one of our first early episodes, we were on, we were on the riverbank in Porto. And that was just glorious, absolutely glorious sunshine. Um, and yeah, now now I'm stuck in my shed. <laughs> but we didn't. We did, we did the wild beer uh, tavern before it went. Uh, yeah. I'm trying to think of some other places we've done here. Yeah. That's all right. I mean, it's just good. You know, it's just interesting to hear because you must have such a great time. We talked about some of the history and you know getting out to to see various places. By the end of the podcast, are you, <laughs> does it does it start quite well, and then sort of four hours later is a little bit less coherent. Well, no, again, Paul's amazing at keeping me on track because, <laughs> yeah, as, as you know, you've got to break things up for the listeners so uh, that people can, they can listen to us ramble for a little bit, but we don't have the option of putting in songs every now and again. So, Paul, so we've got to keep it to 30, 40 minutes, Jeff, then otherwise we're going to lose people. So, yeah, we'll, we'll do a good 30, 40 minutes and then we have to wrap it up. Mm. Um, and that's, that's usually pretty good. That's, that's about the time it takes us to drink a pint and then we'll, we'll go and get another one. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Well, look, you're going to be back with us again a little bit later on in the show, so uh, we'll catch up. Thanks for introducing some of the tracks as well. I appreciate that. No worries. Good fun. All right, cool. We'll catch you later. Cheers. Tonight, it's Jeff who's been with us throughout the show tonight, co-hosting from The Shed in the Garden in Cheltenham. Hiya, Jeff. Hey, John. Hiya. Is the log burner going at the moment, or is it sort of tailed off now? No, it's tailed off now. It's uh, yeah, the, the residue of the heat has, has just left it a nice ambient temperature for this evening. Oh, nice. Look, thank you for joining us on the show tonight. We found out what it means to be an agile coach, uh, which is something you, you started. Um, and uh, you said that there are other people doing this now, but also the agile pubcast. We heard a very short snippet of this earlier on. Would you mind if we perhaps hear a little bit more about what you get up to? No, go for Great, it. Great, here we go then. Hello, 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 and welcome to another edition of the Agile Pubcast. This time, Paul Goddard, Nigel Baker and myself, Jeff Watts, got together in Bristol and we found an interesting new place called the Bristol and Bath Rum Distillery. This place had a massive still where they made their own rum and a load of mini stills upstairs where people could make their own. See, this it sounds quite dangerous, to be honest. Making their own rum, you've got stills, you're there with some microphones. Uh, it does sound like an awful lot of fun, but I imagine there's quite a lot of work to get it all together as well, Jeff. Um, it's, well, we, we try and keep it lo-fi, to be honest. Genuinely speaking, we, we just put a dictaphone in the middle of the table. Mm. Um, I mean, we have sort of upgraded the equipment over the years, but we've we found that actually the simple stuff is generally the best. Mm. 
Um, so yeah, there's a there's a little bit. To be honest, there's more effort in the in the remote podcast when we're not in the same place than when we're in when we're in a pub together. Mm. So we've put a little bit of uh, you know pub ambiance in the background, uh, stitch that in, and trying to get the, uh, the the two audio levels to sync when we're in different places. That's that's a lot harder <laughs> than when we're just sitting around a table. Also, a distinct lack of stills and various equipment, I imagine, as well around you when you're in the shed, unless you've got your own little brewing empire going on. <laughs> Not that I could admit to you on live. Yeah. <laughs> now, look, if people want to go and find out a little bit more about the podcast, perhaps hear some more of what you've been getting up to. Jeff, where is the best place to do that? Well, my website's inspectandadapt.com, uh, and you can pretty much find anything from there to do with me. Uh, or you know, if you put Agile and Pubcast into any kind of pub, uh, sorry, podcast provider, then you won't, you won't really be confused by lots of different options. We're pretty, pretty unique in that regard. So, yeah. Brilliant. And like you say, people might want to find out more about being an agile coach and some of the work you do as well. They might have heard tonight and thought, do you know what? I, I like the sound of that. So the website's the best place for that as well, Jeff. Yeah. And do you know what? There's there's quite a few of these free meetup groups, which hopefully will be starting up again in person soon as restrictions ease. But there's a couple even in Cheltenham. There's one called Magic, the most agile group in Cheltenham. And they meet up at pubs as well and it's a sort of networking after work thing where people can share what's going on at work hear some speakers you know, basically find out other people in the local area who are who are doing the same kind of job with them it's mm. it's pretty cool great all right well look thanks so much for joining us on the show and uh, we'll have to stay in touch let us know how things go with the podcast and we'll, we'll catch up again very soon jeff yeah maybe we'll do a live one that'd be great yeah all right well look thanks for joining us and uh, yeah we'll we'll get something in the working all right cheers john